All right. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. We are recording this, so if you want to catch it later, uh, you'll find it. We'll send you the email, the link. Also, just to prove that we are living in the 21st century and what a century it is, we are going to, we'll be showing you some exercises today. In the link, there will be, a, the link will include little video clips of the exercises. So, I mean, it just doesn't get much better than that. What's that? And you will, you'll be getting that in an email. But that leads us to the question, how many of you, or is there anyone that did not receive the email from last week? So everyone got it? Okay, good. Um, you did not get the email. Okay, so you'll want to see Janess at the end of class to see what's going on there. Uh, have you been getting emails that had, you got your results? Okay, so you may want to check your junk file maybe. Um, and that's right, that's right. So, okay. So, yeah, but see, uh, see Janess afterwards to make sure that everything is good in that department. Okay. So, any questions from last week? Any questions from last week? Anything that you're, now that you've had a chance to, you know, get going or to, to pick things up where you feel like, ah, what was this or what was that? Anything? Okay, and if something does come up, if something nudges your memory, you're like, oh, yeah, what about, feel free to ask at any time. How many of you had a chance? No, 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 that's not the question. How many of you actually, those of you that needed to improve, actually kind of picked up your game a little bit? You started doing a little bit more. Awesome. Very well done. Good job. That's, that's fantastic. So everyone raised their hand, which is great. Some of you were a little reluctant, but that's okay. So it makes me wonder, but uh, no, that's great. So well done. All right. So today we're going to talk about functional strength. Functional strength is the strength that you need to go about your day-to-day -day activities. It's the thing, it's the strength that you need to carry out your daily function. Uh, if you like to, you know, if you're hauling groceries in from the car, or you're weeding the garden, or you're mowing the lawn, or you're, you know, whatever it is, the strength that you need to perform those activities is functional strength, okay? And so we've divided the body into three different segments if you will and we'll show you exercises from each one now the way this looks is you want to um, you you do what you can do just like we said with cardiovascular you don't have to start out doing three sets of 12 to 15 repetitions of each exercise there may be some where it's like you know what I can only do a few of those and then I'm done and that's fine that's where you start but the idea is to do it on a regular basis now the first exercise, the first exercise that we have are for the lower body, as you're looking at your sheet. The next one are core, and then the last one are upper body. The first and the last you should do every other day. Okay, so it'd be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever, every other day. You want to have about 48 hours in between doing your strength exercises. The core, however, you can do every single day. Okay, does that make sense? The sets and repetitions, let's talk about that for just a second. So um, if you do, like, okay, we're going to, the first exercise we're going to do is a sit to stand. So if I do the, one of those, that's one repetition. If I do two, that's two repetitions. Okay, so I'm going to do, so we're going to say that your target is 12 to 15 repetitions of each exercise and then building up to three sets. Okay, so that means I'm going to do 12 sit to stands, and then I'm going to rest. And the rest period should be at least one minute. Okay, at least one minute. No quicker than that, at least one minute. Okay, then you do your second set, and then you rest one minute, and then you do your third set. Now, the way this may look is the first set you do 12. 
and by the time you get to the 12th, you're, you know, you're starting to fatigue. That's perfect. The second set, you may only get to eight. That's fine. I would write that down, though. Say I did 12, and then I did eight. Then you rest a minute, and then you do your last set, which may only be five, okay? And that's fine. That's what you do. And then you build from there, okay? But the, 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 the point, and we talked about this last week, is to overload the system. So you're just going to do a little bit more every time you try it. Does that make sense? Okay. When you can do three sets of 12 to 15, when you get there and it's like ho-hum, then it's time to increase, right? It's time to say, all right, I can do that readily. And so you'll either add resistance by holding on to weights or you will do a, an exercise that is more difficult. And when we're doing the lower body, we, we show you this progression, okay? Any questions about sets and repetitions? Okay, don't cheat yourself on the rest. In fact, if you want to measure your progress better, you really are, you're pretty strict about that one minute rest. So when you quit the exercise, you do your first set, then you stop and you look at your timer and you say, okay, one minute, and then as soon as that minute's up, then you start again, okay? And that just helps you monitor your progress. It's not critical, but it just, again, just helps you see how things are going. Okay, any questions? All right, so there's a couple of things that we want to that we really want to be careful with when we're, so we're talking lower body now, a couple things that we really want to be careful, our back and our knees, okay? And we, so when we do the exercise, we're constantly focused on making sure that our back is strong and that our knees are protected. So let's look at the form. This form will apply, as Janessa pointed out yesterday, this form will apply, come on in, We've got plenty of seating. This form applies to every exercise that we do. So uh, later when we're doing some of the upper body stuff, you're still keeping track of these principles, keeping your back strong, protecting your knees. So let's look at this first exercise, the sit to stand. Let's start with the knees. What your knees do not like is to be extremely bent, okay? So this angle is so we have this angle and we don't want this to be much less than 90 degrees okay so you can see right now that from here to here is about 90 degrees do you see that okay I don't want to ever try to I don't want to have that get much less than 90 when I do it puts what they call a shear force on your knee so here's my femur and here's my tibia, so those are the two main bones of the knee joint. When I come down, this just pivots, so again, this is my upper bone, this is my lower bone. So I'm standing and they're, you know, they're firmly meshed. As I bend down, that joint opens up. If I, if I bend my knee too much, it causes this top bone to slide on the bottom bone, okay? And when it does that, it puts a sheer force on the knee. And it's hard on your knee to do that. That's why if you're a catcher, if you're ever a catcher in baseball, their knees are shot because they're in that sheer position for hours a day. And, you know, so now they're trying to, they have different implements that they're using to try to save those knees, okay? So we want to avoid that real bend, especially under load. Okay, especially under load. So if you're just sitting there and your knees are bent, it's not that big a deal. There's not a shear force. But if you're standing on it or if you're holding something heavy, you don't want to have those knees bent. So when we're doing the sit to stand, you want to keep your feet out in front of you a little bit to avoid that, <coughs> to avoid that real steep angle. Okay, then we're going to, so you lean forward and then lift from there. Okay. That's the exercise. So I'm going to have you practice with me. Janessa's going to keep her eye on you here. I've instructed her to blow an air horn if she sees someone in violation, okay? So, all right. So let's go ahead. Um, we'll start here. So we lean forward, okay? And then we stand up watching that angle, okay? Let's do that. 
so you watch that angle and then down okay and then up and then down good okay good so that's the first thing we worry about knees the next thing is the angle that we have our feet in relation to our knees when we're doing anything bending we want to make sure that our toes and our knees are pointing in the same direction okay so I'll do it correctly and then I'll do it poorly so right now my toes are about shoulder width and they're turned out uh, just a few degrees on both sides okay so I'm gonna lean forward and lift and when I come down knees stay oriented over in the direction my toes are pointing that's the right way the wrong way is to have my knees like this and this is a very common thing that we do is we tuck our knees in and then we stand up like this okay and especially when we come down we bring our knees in so what's happening now if you look my foot is pointing here my knee is pointing here so they're not in the same direction okay they need to be oriented this way not this way you can see that that would put a twist on your knee okay and your knees don't like that okay so when you stand up and when you sit down you align your knees okay up and down now when I'm doing this exercise I can mess around with how my feet are positioned I can turn them wide and when I do this I just follow my rule knees and toes go in the same direction so when I stand up and do, do this with me when I stand or when we stand up we're gonna make sure our knees and toes track okay come up and then back down and up and back down Janessa how are they doing do a few more okay here we go <laughs> you're gonna be sore tomorrow that's all right okay and up and down make sure those knees track the whole time okay now with your feet wide you may have felt that a little bit more on your inside thigh and that's great say because we are using those muscles a little bit more when they're wide we also use our glutes more when our feet are wide okay and so sit to stands are great you can do wide you can do narrow if you have your feet narrow you same rules knees and toes pointing in the same direction do not let your knees pinch in okay and you start watching people and you'll see lots of pinching knees they just that's a natural thing that we do but it's not good for your knees to do that okay so you can do them narrow that puts more emphasis on your quadriceps okay neutral you're working quads hams and glutes kind of getting all of it and then if you go wide you're still working quads hams and glutes but you're emphasizing more the inner thigh and the glutes with that wide stance so you could do one set narrow one set neutral and one set wide follow the rules okay and you'll be good any questions about that yes yes and we're going to talk about that right now okay so good uh, so the, the comment was and I have to say it so that the rest of the world can hear it if you suck in your butt and gut it helps and yes it does okay there uh, we were reviewing last week's tape and my wife pointed out can't hear the questions so there I've covered my base all right so now let's talk about butts and guts <laughs> okay so really what we're talking about is back and and the reason you suck in your gut and tighten your glutes is to protect your back okay so what our backs do not like um, first of all let's let's start from a sit to lean forward from here unsupported and pick up something is very hard on your back sitting and leaning forward and lifting is worse on your back than standing and lifting okay so don't sit and lift okay also if you are at a computer and you're looking at the screen and you're peering at the screen 
your back is unsupported and this is hard on your back you can feel it when you do this and, I mean and if you have to peer this much at your computer or whatever um, you may want to see your ophthalmologist first okay but get that squared away all right but so we're protecting our back so the way that looks in our squats or in our sit to stands is when I come back I push my hips back okay but I keep my back strong okay so it looks like this I'm gonna come down knees and toes are lined up my weight is primarily on my heels because if I come forward on my toes look what my knees do I'm putting that shear force so I keep my weight back on my heels okay I'm back my back is strong and then I just lift up okay back is strong let me show you what it looks like poorly okay so if I round here and I'm more or less stooping over okay this is not a good squat that is putting strain on my back okay and so the muscles that I'm I am using my legs a little bit my hips a little bit but I'm mainly using these muscles in my low back they're not built for that okay they're built to help us stand tall not to not to lean over and pick up stuff off the floor okay so do it right you're here and then back up okay so let's practice that okay so we're sitting sitting let's do a neutral one so your feet are about shoulder width toes are either straight ahead or slightly turned out make sure your knees go in that same direction okay lean forward when you lean forward you engage your back okay so you're tight right here and then stand and lift okay and then back down okay and let's come up now the reason I keep my hands out here is it's it helps me it's a counterbalance okay so I can it helps me keep my balance if I keep my arms out in front of me and lift back is nice and strong down okay rest Janessa did you get a good enough sample she says everybody's improving as we go which is awesome <laughs> okay that is awesome now your improvement is so at first when you're first doing these <clears throat> you come up and then it's plop and you rest your weight entirely on the chair as you improve when you come down you just lightly touch okay so it's down just three molecules of your pants touch five molecules on the chair and that's it you just barely touch okay so down and up keeping that back strong buns tight knees and toes lined up any questions here here here, here. come here I feel official now can you hear me oh okay um, so if uh, you can't uh, do only just a little bit on the chair if you need to sit all the way down that is okay as well but um, we just want you to start with where you're at so if that means that you're you're starting here and you have to sit all the way down and kind of get yourself get some momentum to get back up that is a-okay but just kind of work your way up to that point where you are just barely touching that seat um, to add to what Janessa said you can also I mean so if you have to come to a full parade rest that's fine you can also use your hands if you want to okay this is a help and ideally you work to not using your hands but at first if you have to we had someone that came to yesterday's class and they said no I can't even do that they have to use the arms of their chair that's fine if that's what you can do if that's where you're starting then that's what you do okay all right any questions Yes. Yeah, so so by sucking in your <laughs> butt and gut, the the question is or the the situation is if you're 
thinking more about your back and keeping your back because the reason you suck in your butt and gut is to protect your back. So if you're thinking, okay, is my back strong, yet I'm engaging my glutes there and my abs are engaged too just to protect this. So when I come up, that is all in the right place. So yes, we're, we're saying the same thing, I think. Okay, good. All right, good questions. All right, so the next exercise is the assisted squat. And we've got a couple. So here in the gym, we have, they're over on the far wall. We have two machines. They're called Smith machines, and they have a bar that's fixed. Okay, and we like to use the bar to do these. Okay, we're going to do the same. Uh, so I'm going to be the bar. Janessa's going to be the squatter here. Um, yeah, here. Come over a little bit more. There you go. All right. So let's watch her form, her feet pointing straight ahead, essentially maybe a tiny bit out, and that's totally fine. Her knees are lined up. She's going to put her weight on her heels and push her hips back. Okay. How's her back? Does it look good? Look strong? Okay. And then come back up. All right. Let's do it again. And again. Yeah. Let's do 28 more. Okay, Okay, and this is how we want you to look. Now, some of you may have a dance background, and, and for whatever reason, we see that a lot. I mean, we see this phenomenon in dancers. They've been told that, you know, you keep all of this straight and strong, and you keep this vertical. Good squats don't do that. We want you to push your hips back. So don't think about, okay, I need to squat down. Think, I need to push my hips back. I need to engage my glutes. I need to keep, protect my knees. So you're thinking that motion of just pushing your hips back. And if you do that, you're doing a good squat, keeping your weight on your heels. Okay, so we have the bar over here. You could also do this on any firm object. So if at home, at the kitchen sink, okay, that's a great place to do squats. Make sure it's nice and firm. The back of a sofa would be fine too. Something nice and firm. These chairs are not great, okay, because they're not, they're not sturdy enough, okay. Do not do squats in the bathroom. Don't do them on your towel rod, okay. That is, that, <laughs> towel rods were not made for people to do squats, okay. And I would say don't practice anything in the bathroom but personal hygiene that's that's all because there's a lot of hard uneven surfaces in the bathroom that uh, can cause a lot of damage if something goes wrong okay so so yes that's right so you can also use a vertical um, object like a post if you have a post at home or uh, you know maybe a stair rail or something like that something that's nice and solid okay that makes sense? And then same thing out here. I mean, if there's something out on the floor, if there's a machine that, you know, if you want to grab the, you know, and, and practice your squats, that's totally fine, okay? The other one, and this is a kind of a step up, is to use the rings. Now, we have some rings, and they're over, they're actually on the same machine where this fixed bar is. The Smith machines are over on the far wall, and the rings are on straps. There's not some guy standing there holding the rings, okay? But we're pretending that these are straps, okay? The difference between this and the bar is that you have a little bit of funny business going on, which makes these a little bit harder, okay? Because they're not as stable, okay? So Janessa's going to do the same thing. She sits down and back. Here, let's scoot a little bit this way, okay? Down and back, there it is. Good. Now, you can't tell, but she's just minimally hanging on. That's the reason she's hanging. <laughs> yeah. The reason she's hanging on is to keep her from pitching over backwards. That's it. Okay. So, form looks great using the rings. Okay. Any questions about the bar or the rings? Okay. The last one, no, there's uh, two more. The other one would be a regular squat, and we've already kind of demonstrated that, but let's look at it again. So we're here. I personally like this little wider stance. Whatever works for you is great, okay? So I follow my rules. Knees and toes, back strong, okay? Everything's good here. 
push my hips back, reach forward, drop down. Okay? Right now, I feel that through my inside thigh and my glutes. Okay? And then I just come up. Now, look at my angle here. We're at about 90 degrees. My weight's on my heels. Okay? And then I come up. All right? If you have to choose one exercise, I would choose something from this group. Okay? Your legs are the most important part of functional strength. They're the, what do they say, legs feed the wolf or something like that? I don't know. Is that what it is, legs feed the wolf? Yeah. Never heard that? Well, maybe that's not the right saying. <laughs> it, it is now. Uh, yeah. It's from... Um, the movie Miracle, uh, anyway. Meaning, the foundation of all your movement starts here, okay? The foundation of the, you know, being ambulatory, being able to walk, and all that all starts right here in the legs, and so keeping those strong is important. In fact, let me just, a quick little anecdote. I, this is kind of a little bit off topic, but not really. We've had a lot of people who have lived in a home or in a, an apartment complex where they had stairs. They're climbing those stairs all the time, and they hate their stairs because, ah, oh, such hard work to get up and down. Ah, oh, I have to climb up those stairs oh, 20 times a day or whatever. So they move. They get rid of their stairs. Their health drops within two or three weeks, and it is, it is a precipitous drop where it's just like all of a sudden they can't do anything and because... They're taking away that stimulus that they've been getting. As big a pain as it was, it was, help them, it was helping them stay healthy. And so that's just an illustration of how important our leg strength is. Okay. Um, so the, the last one I want to show you, you can do it assisted or not. It's a split squat. Okay. You want to have a nice deep stance. Okay. If I let go of the, of the support, this is just a great exercise to challenge balance, okay? But as it stands, we're just going to do that same thing. We're watching this front leg, okay? Because this is the leg that's bearing the weight. I lean, lean forward a little bit. I engage my low back and glutes, and I drop down. I keep my rules, knees and toes lined up. This stays at 90 degrees, and then I come up. I don't have to touch the back knee, okay? If, if I can only go that far, great. Okay, but if I can go down, I'm going to come down and back up. So I'm going to do a set of 12 on the left leg, and then I'll switch legs and do a 12 on the other side. Okay, that's a split squat. Now, if I want, oh, can you hand me the weights, please? Um, all of these exercises I can make more difficult by holding on to weights. Okay, so if I'm doing a squat, I'm going to hold those weights up here and then do my squat. If I'm going to do a split squat, I'm going to hold them here and do it that way. Okay? You don't have to have two. You can do one. Okay? If you're doing these at home, you don't have to have dumbbells necessarily. A gallon of liquid is eight pounds. So if you have some old milk jugs, that's eight pounds. Okay, which is equivalent to those. Uh, you could fill it with sand. And I don't know how much a, a gallon of sand is, but I'm sure it's more than eight. Anyway, so you could use those for resistance if you need them. Okay? And they're, those are pretty tough. Janess. When you are doing a split squat, um, my dad mentioned it, you want to have a deep stance. And the reason behind that is because if you have a narrow stance here and you go down, you see how my knees automatically jut forward like that. Again, putting on that pressure on that knees. So make sure you have that wide, very wide stance to make sure that that knee doesn't, doesn't go forward. Okay. Thank you, Janess. All right, any questions? Nothing? Just plain as day? All right, good. All right, so the next one, the next area that we want to go to 
is, our, our, is the core. And we're going to show you a couple of different exercises there. Okay. Now we said that the legs feed the wolf. The core, what does it do for the wolf? I don't know. <laughs> Something. So the core is the center of... All movement centers on the core. The core is not just your belly, okay? Your belly is certainly part of your core, but belly, glutes, your hip flexors, your quads and hamstrings are also part of your core. They're a, a minor part, but they are still part of your core. Okay, so the first one that we're going to do is called a bird dog. And there is, so go ahead and bring both feet down. So if you look, there are six points right now that are touching the floor. Her hands are for two, her knees for two, and her toes for two. Okay, so there's six points. And so when she's here, she's going to focus on keeping this level. She's going to focus on keeping her head in alignment with her spine. Okay, and when you're here, it's kind of hard to tell if you're in good alignment. So just go with your best guess. Okay, so you're just going to keep all of this in alignment. Um, and then you're also, uh, what else? No, that's, that's it, okay? You also may want to squeeze your glutes too, a little bit. All right, and I won't do that for you. That's your job, okay? Okay, so if we take one point away, so let's go ahead and lift your left hand, okay? So now we call this a five-point bird dog. One, two, three, four, five points touching, okay? when she lifts that point her body automatically has to tighten here and here okay it just it tightens and you have to be careful and you're protecting this don't let this sway you just keep that nice and strong okay if this is all you can do great if not if you're like eh, that's pretty easy then do uh, okay so she's gonna switch sides because that first sides tired she's gonna lift that so now we have three points touching here, here, and here. Okay, so we call this a three-point bird dog. Nice and strong. She's still focusing on keeping her back strong. Her head is still in alignment. Okay, and she feels this working, right? You can tell because she's starting to shake a little bit. Okay, go ahead and rest. Okay, let's show them a two-point bird dog. Okay, this is the hardest of the bird dog. Well, I guess you could do a one-point bird dog. <laughs> Okay, so come up two point. So, yeah, this is hard. So it's just this hand and this knee touching. She's got her right toes up as well. Okay, and so this really challenges the core. So she's having just really, so it's a great balance and core exercise. Okay, and down. So what she's doing, we call a static. So the last one was a static two-point bird dog. All right. Do a, let's do a dynamic three-point, okay, a dynamic three-point. So now she's doing repetitions, okay. Let's have you hold it just a little bit longer. There you go, there you go. Up and hold, okay, and down, focusing on keeping that core nice and strong. You notice her back does sway a little bit, but she's holding it tight, okay, good. Okay, so this is... This is what we call a dynamic three-point bird dog. Static, you're holding. Dynamic, you're repeating. Okay. On your sheet, I think we describe a, it's a dynamic. Oh, no, no, it's static because you're holding for 30 seconds. Okay. Both of which are good. Okay. So these muscles are your postural muscles. Okay. So those core muscles. That's a great exercise. If getting down on the floor, yes. That, so the question was, if you have bad knees, what do you do? And, and we're, I was just going to address that general issue. So if you're uncomfortable getting down on the floor or kneeling is difficult, then do those in bed. Do them on top of your bed. Now, in bed is harder than on a hard floor because, yeah, you've got that to, to deal with, the uneven surface or the squishy surface of the bed. But that's even better. I mean, if that uneven surface is just a little more of a challenge. So you may not be able to do as many, but at least you're doing them, okay? And maybe start with a five-point, then go to your three-point and so forth, okay? But in bed, if your knees can handle that, and if that's still too much, then put a pillow under your knees, 
try to, to um, pad that a little bit. And yeah, thank you. Janessa points out that here at the gym in the back corner, we have the table that's padded. And if, that's, if there's not enough padding on the table, you can add, there's pads underneath that you can add on there too, okay, to do your bird dogs. Okay, so that's going to be one. That's going to be one sequence of, ex sequence of exercises. If you're new to it, start with a five point. Get good at that, okay? When you're good at that, go to a three point. When you're good at that, try the two point, okay? Try static, try dynamic, do them both. They're all good, okay? Questions about sets and reps there? All right. Not a terribly inquisitive bunch this morning. <laughs> or maybe we're just excellent at explaining. All right, and which I... <laughs> okay, so the next one we're going to do is called a Russian twist. And we're not sure why it's Russian, but um, I don't know. If you have an idea, I'd love to hear it. Okay, because you're rushing into it. Maybe that's it. Okay, that's as good as any. <laughs> and that might be it. Okay, so here... So Janessa's going to lean back a little bit, and when she does, she's going to hollow her abs. And by hollowing your abs, we mean she's just going to tighten right here so that her abs are hollow. Does that make sense? Okay, so she's leaning back. And so right here, I like to call it the QZ, the quiver zone. Okay, so, she, so right now, holding that is exerting. She, to hold that's like, oh boy, you know, and... and Talk faster, Dad, because I don't want to stay here forever. Okay, so then she's going to start doing this Russian twist. Okay, and it's just that turn from side to side. So she's working her abs here, the rectus abdominis, if you're a muscle geek or whatever. And then she's also working her abdominus obliquus, <laughs> or her, her obliques. Yeah, I don't know why we're using the scientific names, but anyway... She's working these muscles as well, okay? All postural muscles, all helping to support her torso and her back, okay? The next step up from here is to add weights. Let me grab a weight. Okay, so um, she's going to just hold this weight here, and it's the same motion. Okay, you can use a medicine ball, you can use your cat, you could use the neighbor's cat. Okay, now, yes. If that's, if that's what works for you, so the question was if, if she can mentally picture um, sucking in her abs, will that help? And the answer certainly is yes. If you think about hollowing your abs, that will also help. Just hollow. So you just crunch. And just by doing that, try it now. If you just, if you just crunch your abs, you can feel your abs engage. Okay? As soon as you lean back and, you, and you're keeping keeping this hollow. Now, if you sit back and don't hollow your abs, that's, it's hard on your back, for one thing, it's just hard anyway. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. I know it's, it's an ingrained habit, which is good. Okay, go ahead and pick up that weight. Just, so a variation of this um, is to actually, instead of bringing it across your front, is to bring it over your head. Okay, and just and so she's still doing that twist, and you can see her little bun up here is shaking. <laughs> or or so do that, or still touch it to the floor. Yeah, we're and that's that's quite a bit harder, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Or yeah, and Janessa points out you can do Russian twists with your feet up. Yeah. Okay? 
<laughs> she can't. Okay. Any questions on Russian twists? Yes. Okay, the, so the comment was, it looks like it could be hard on the back, and if you don't hollow your abs, then it can be. That's right. That's absolutely right. Yes, that's right. So the comment was, if you're not very strong here, to be more careful. And that's right, and also, don't lean back as far. Okay, so if, you're, if it's too much, then don't lean back as far. Um, we had a question yesterday that's worth addressing. If you're doing an exercise... Okay, you're good, Janice. If you're doing an exercise and you feel your back afterwards, especially with these, if you're like, oh gosh, that got my back, the first thing I want you to do is to tighten your abs. Okay, see if you can use your muscles to pull that soreness out. Okay, a great place to try this is if you have an easy chair. Does anyone have an easy chair at home, a lazy boy, recliner, or whatever? Okay. Those chairs are really hard on your back. I mean, at, when you first lie back, you're like, ah. But uh, you'll notice that if you lie like that, your back will start to bug you a little bit. So see if you can just uh, tighten your abs and pull that pain out. And I don't know how to describe that better. You're just tightening, and that tightening helps support your back so it feels better. Okay? So when you're driving your back gets tired ah see if you can tighten your abs and pull that pain out okay or anytime if you're working on you know cooking or whatever and, and you notice stooping over that you're like oh man my back is bugging me okay tighten ah squeeze your buns tighten your, ah, and see if that helps okay all right make sure you do breathe though yeah So one of the biggest things that causes back, back pain is actually prolonged sitting. Um, so, which makes sense, hence the car when your back feels a, a little bit of pain. So if you are sitting for a long period of time watching a show or whatever, um, watching TV, binge watching, make sure you stand up. Again, tighten those abs to help relieve that back or just stand up and walk around a little bit. Um, they, this is just pointless fact, but it's interesting. They say that uh, optimal, optimal health, you should be stand or sitting less than four hours a day. So keep that in mind as you are, you know, trying to, you know, protect that back or help any sort of back pain that you have. Ideally, you want to be standing a little bit more, sitting a little less. Um, Along with that, though, standing can cause back pain, too. So just be careful. that We're going to go over posture in a second, but pay attention to that because that will help as well. Thank you, Janessa. All right. Let's go upper body. Let's look at the upper body. Okay. Um, so the first one on your sheet there is a uh, supported bent over row supported I have my hand on a chair and actually I, it's gonna be better if I have it on something a little more solid okay or you know so the the seat is more solid than the back so I'm bent over my front leg is here this support is important because this is is the buttress for my back this is what's supporting my back is my hand down here okay and I'm gonna just pull this up okay I just pull that up. Okay? Pretty straightforward. All right. That's called a supported bent over, row, bent over row. Of course, I do one side and then the other. Okay? Unsupported. This is also a really good exercise if done correctly. If done incorrectly, it's a rotten exercise. Okay? So do it right. So if you watch, I'm going to keep all the rules that we've talked about. Knees and toes are in the same direction. I'm going to push my hips back. I'm going to make sure that I'm, that I'm nice and tight and engaged. My back is strong. Okay, so right here, I can feel this working. I can feel this holding in. Okay, my back is strong. And then I just pull up and I squeeze those shoulder blades. 
this exercise, I'm working a lot of my postural muscles, the muscles that help me stand up nice and tall. Okay, my head is in alignment. Okay, so I'm not down, I'm not up. It's just in neutral position, up and squeeze. Okay. Any questions about that? That's called an unsupported bent over row. Okay. Nothing? All right. Um, the next one is the push press. Okay, and it's here. I've got my hands at about 45 degrees. Let's talk about that a little bit. If I turn my arms in, it's going to be a little bit easier on a sore shoulder. Okay, if my shoulders are fine, then I can turn them out a little bit. But if my shoulders are a little tender, then turn those weights in. Okay. I follow my rules, okay, knees and toes, back strong, and then I stand and press, okay, so it's down, stand and press, down, stand and press, okay, so the muscles I'm working, of course, working my lower body when I'm doing those squats, but I'm working my shoulders and my triceps, the back of my arms when I'm doing that push press, okay, yes. So probably, so the question was, how would this affect the left scapula? So um, you'd probably want to have that your grip facing in. Yeah. This opens the shoulder up for some too much. Not, not everyone. Every, some people can open that up and it's fine. But generally this is a little safer. Uh, safer is not the right word. It's less, uh, it's less strenuous to turn it in. Here's the, here's the thing. So when I turn it in, when I t so you think, well, why don't you just do that all the time? Because if I keep them in, I'm kind of isolating my, the front of my shoulder. So I'm only working here and in the back of my arm. Okay, if I open up, it's a little more risky, but I am working more of the shoulder. I'm getting the full shoulder deltoid here, okay, if I open up. Okay, and so you're like, well, my shoulders are fine, then go ahead and do this. Okay, if they're not, if there's problems like you're saying, then turn them in. So this is an every other day. Yeah, and we did talk about that. And so, th no, 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 you're fine. That's, that's a great question. I'm glad you're thinking about it. Okay, so this exercise is not really hitting the scapula. I mean, you're not, you're not working it much. The bent over row or the supported row is for sure working that. So, so that first exercise, so you're on your left side, you're here, just come up and really squeeze that shoulder blade when you're coming up. That one is working that directly. The bent over, the supported bent over row. Okay, yeah. Um, so we did the push press, and then the last one that we have listed, and then we're going to show you one that's not, but this last one is a power curl. Okay, so here again, um, I can have my hands, palms facing in. My squat rules are the same, knees and toes back. Okay, so it's down and curl, down and curl. Now, this one is easier than this one. If I turn my palms forward, now I'm isolating the bicep a little bit more. If I turn my palms in, I'm working my forearm and my bicep. Neither one's right or wrong. They're just different from each other. So this one's easier. This one's harder. Okay? But I'm adding that little squat to it and curling up. Okay? Any questions about that? Pretty straightforward. Sure, yeah, yeah.
Okay, so it's down, it's a good squat, curl. Down, curl. Yep. For, for any of you that have um, a weaker arm, which is generally most people, you kind of want to cater to that weaker arm. Um, so, for example, if you were doing a, a bicep curl and your left arm is just really, really struggling, do not go heavier on your right arm. It probably goes without saying. You want to keep them balanced as much as possible. Okay? So it's okay if one arm is struggling and one arm is not. Just keep them balanced. Because if you increase the weight on one arm, it's just going to make the imbalance even more. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah, that's an important point. And that goes for all exercise. Uh, you do cater to the weak side because if you cater to the strong side, then it just exacerbates the problem. Okay, any questions about anything that we've talked about today? Keep asking, but okay, now's your chance. If you think of something later, don't hesitate to pull one of us aside and we're happy to answer any questions you have, okay? I want to show you one more that's not on here, and it, it, this is a postural exercise, okay? And I'm going to have you do this with me. So you're going to sit back in your chair, and you make sure that you feel your back. And, and those of you that have taken my chair class, we do this quite often, okay? I call them blossoms. So you're going to let your arms hang to your side. You feel your low back well supported in the chair, okay? Now, what I want you to do is to let your head fall and you're going to and just kind of slump forward but don't let your low back leave the chair and i want you to kind of take note of the muscles that you feel stretching okay i feel this in my upper back and my neck a little bit okay so those muscles that are stretching are the ones that i want to contract and i'm going to come up and i open up and then just sit up nice and tall in your chair so right now my low back is touching my upper back is not Okay, and you're here, okay, tummy's in, yeah, okay, good, sitting up nice and tall, that looks really good, okay, and then let's just draw those shoulder blades together in the back, okay, and just hold that, and you're going to hold it for about 30 seconds or so, and then back down, and just for a count, feel the stretch, and then let's come back up, open, 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 good, and as you're doing this, make sure you're breathing, just one sec, Okay, make sure you're breathing. I don't want you to look up. Okay, I do want you to just keep your chin level. Okay, just keep your chin level and hold that, hold it. And then back down, just a count or two, and then one more time, up and hold. Now, if you want, we don't have space here, but you can open your arms up more. Yeah, if you know the person next to you, just... <laughs> If you don't, you'll get to know them very quickly. Okay, so yeah, just hold, hold, and just drawing those shoulder blades together in the back. What happens in life is life is in front of us. You can relax. Um, life is in front of us. We're at the computer. We are eating. We're, everything is here. And so what happens, the muscles in front, because they're constantly in use, get tight and strong, but the muscles in back get loose and weak. And so this exercise, these blossoms, the idea is to open up so you're stretching here and then give that little squeeze in the back so you're strengthening in your back. Okay, so we're getting both, uh, both sides of that. Mitch, you had a question? No, no, I want you sitting up tall so that you're not supported. So if you're leaning back, I don't want you to use the chair for support so you're up and, you're up and strong. Okay, and it, as you get better at it, we'll have you even sit forward so you're not a, against the chair at all, and then you can really slump and really feel, and then come up and open and hold, okay? And Mario, we do this a lot in our chair class. Yeah, this is a common, call them blossoms. I think in the video, it's called a 3-9 blossom, and that's with your arms out at three and nine, right, and drawing back. This would be a four and eight, right? Just talking about the clock, your hands on the clock. Okay, 
All right, so a couple of housekeeping things. Um, so, of course, we have our seminar next week. The week after, we will not be here. Okay, we're going to skip a week. Our daughter-in-law and son are graduating from college, so we're going to go back to see that. Uh, so we're going to miss that. So it's just going to push everything back one week from there. But next week, we're good. We're here. Okay, the other thing, make sure that you've signed in today. So if you came in and forgot to scan your card, please do so as you're leaving. Um, yeah, so this video, the recording of today, to review if you need to watch that the exercise videos the handout flyer copy it will all be in an email you should get that uh, tonight or tomorrow okay so I'll be coming all right you guys thank you so much for coming today appreciate you being here and we'll see you next week again if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask <laughs>